So how do you actually make passive income as a college student? In this video, I'm gonna talk about how to do exactly that. So stay tuned. Okay, so you're up studying late at night, you're a starving college student, you know, you're just trying to make ends meet, just trying to pay for your schooling, let alone everything else that you have going on in life. And now you're trying to figure out, how do I even get ahead, right? How do I have real passive income so that I can actually have a little bit of freedom, especially when I get out to the job market or if I'm doing my own business, whatever it might be, how do I have money coming in right now? And more importantly, I wanna talk about if you stay in for this video, how can you make that income last for a lifetime? Check this out. All right, so first and foremost, passive income as a college student is incredibly hard. I'll just be honest with you, right? I know there's gonna be all kinds of influencers and social media that tell you it'll be so easy and you do nothing and you can literally sit on your butt and make money. And the truth is, guys, they're just selling you a bunch of crap. Why? Because they wanna make more money, not passively telling you how to make passive income, right? That's what they're really doing. And so don't believe all the influencers out there. Many of them who've gotten to that point often work their tails off to get to that point. Now, I'm okay. It's okay if you wanna work, but I'll just be totally honest, brutally honest with you. If you want true passive income, you gotta have money. But if you don't got money, then it's not gonna be passive, right? You're gonna be using time and energy. But the great news is, you're at the stage of life where you can take that time and energy and leverage it better than just working at another like food service business job or something like that. You can actually make better money. So let me give you a few more ideas of how you can actually do that. All right, so many of you might have different side jobs or hustles and things that you've done. You know, maybe you become an ambassador for your college, you try to do some affiliate things, but you can actually start an online business. You can start an online business where you are referring to other people. Here's the great thing is that you can try to create a business from scratch and there's nothing wrong with starting a side hustle. Maybe you've got some talents you could be using to generate more income, but you could actually be referring to other people. This is something I found out early on in my 20s because you know, it was actually by accident. I remember I had a friend that asked me, he said, Chris, like, you're, you're a mortgage broker. Do you like doing mortgages? And I said, well, I like teaching people how to do mortgages, but I absolutely hate doing all the paperwork. Essentially, I hate the grunt work. He said, well, Chris, find somebody to do it for you. And in my mind, I thought, well, that's impossible. Who would actually want to do that kind of work? And he said, trust me, there are people that like doing that kind of work. Well, I asked my, the, the boss, I asked the, the manager at the, mortgage, at the mortgage brokerage, and I said, is there anybody that fits this description? Somebody who would actually like to do paperwork? He said, yeah, a guy named Clark, you should talk to him. I said, of course, if his name is Clark, he's gotta be a nerd, right? And so, sorry to all the Clarks out there. If you're a Clark, we love you. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, I went to him, I said, listen, Clark, if I actually just gave you people, clients, that are already wanting to do a mortgage, but you, know, you would just have to take them through the whole application process and underwriting and everything like that, would you do that? And Clark said, yes, I would love to. I said, awesome, would you pay me half? You know, half for giving you the client, the referral. He said, of course I would. I said, even better. And I thought he was crazy, but it was a great relationship because what had happened is I would talk to my friends or my family. I would teach them like creative things they can do with their mortgage to actually invest with it, make more money, more passive income. And they're like, that's great. Where do I do the mortgage? I said, talk to Clark. And I refer him to Clark and I had a mortgage license still so I could do this legally. I refer him to Clark and then Clark would go and do all the work. They would close on their mortgage. They were super thrilled and happy. Clark was happy because he got paid and then I'm happy because I got paid because he would send me a check in the mail, you know, because back in those days we did more checks than, than today, right? You know, it'd be like somebody Venmoing you in today's day, right? So I would get a check for like a thousand bucks or so and I thought, I spent maybe a half hour or so with these people. This was awesome. I could do this. This is like, it's like over a thousand bucks an hour, you know, I can do this kind of stuff. And so I started doing it with other companies too. I started doing it with like a wholesale jeweler because a lot of my friends, especially when you're younger, right, they were getting married, you know? So I was doing stuff like that and referring to that kind of thing. You might have friends that are looking for certain things that you know, based on, you know, being in college or whatever it might be, you might say, hey, you know what? There's people that sell textbooks like this. Hey, there's somebody who can actually have this kind of business. Maybe I could refer them to that. And maybe I can get paid a referral fee for sending them along. So that's the thing, guys. You can get paid referral fees. I made thousands of dollars a month just at that strategy alone. And that's even when I was starting to just do real estate investing too. So it actually created multiple streams of income coming in for me to the point where I was able to retire when I was 28 years old because I had both of those kind of things paying me at the same time. So remember, that's one great thing you can do is you can become an ambassador or someone that could be a referral source for another company because companies will love to use their marketing budget to pay for those kind of referrals. Those are their favorite types of, 
of customers or clients. All right, now maybe you're interested in something like real estate investing. There's a few things you can do here. And by the way, at the end of this video is my favorite one, so keep with me here. But one thing you can do is called driving for dollars. Now driving for dollars is simply this, is that there are real estate investors. There are people out there trying to find real estate deals, right? So it could be like a wholesale investment company where they actually try to find people that are trying to sell their home, they're desperate to get out of it, and so they're willing to sell it for less and they can actually make profits off of selling it for more, right? There's people like that, kind of like a real estate agent, but a little bit different. Um, you can even have people that are just looking to find properties they can fix and flip. If you're already driving around all the time, this could be great. Maybe you're doing some side business as an Uber driver. A lot of times they love to hire Uber drivers because they know they can take that, that Uber driver's experience by going around driving around neighborhoods. If you see a house that maybe it seems a little bit more run down, maybe it looks like a piece of crap in that neighborhood, but it could be better, has some potential, that could be a great house for that investment company to go look after. And of course, if they end up making money on that deal, they share some of the profits with you. They pay you for some of those deals that they can find. So just so you know, that could be a great way just by dr literally driving around, trying to find deals for real estate investors. And now the last one. Now this one's pretty cool too. This is something that you might wanna do with your parents. And this is kind of something you would do as a partnership. Because here's the thing, you might have time, you might have some energy, or you might just you know, have that desire, that drive. But your parents might have the moolah, they might have the cash, right? They might have the money to actually do something with, but they don't know what to do with it either. By the way, I talked to a lot of people that are like your parents, because I'm, technically I'm your parents' age, you know? But the thing is, a lot of them don't even know what they're doing with their money. They're just throwing it in some mutual fund in the stock market hoping it's gonna make some money someday, right? They don't know what they're doing, they just have these retirement accounts. But you can do something more creative that can make you and them a lot of money. And this is what we refer to as like a house hack, right? Now there's a different strategy. You can even, I'll even throw a bonus one in here. There's a burst strategy, right? Where you can, you can buy a house, you can renovate it, you can refinance to get the cash out of it when it becomes worth more, and then you can rent it out even, right? And actually usually you rent it out before you refinance. So you can actually do your own type of renovation if you'd like to, if, especially if you're handy, this could be a great way to kind of give some labor to your parents, offer some real, real time and attention, but make great money off of renovating a property and then renting it out. So then you make money twice because you get able to pull their money back out and pay them back and you're able to rent it out and make some money off the rental. And you could be the property manager of sorts, getting paid some passive income from that with zero dollars out of your own pocket. Just a little bit of time and energy and maybe some, some little grunt work and some sweat. So that's one way you can do it. The other way is a house hack too, where let's just say that you wanna be the property manager of this house. And maybe you don't have to renovate it, right? Maybe you don't have to go buy some turd on the street, you know? You don't have to buy some crappy property. It's maybe a great one, but maybe it's there on the college campus. What if it's something that's near the college campus you could buy using your parents' money, and then you're the one that actually helps get the renters in. You get your buddies, you know, your, your college friends that become roommates of yours, and then they pay you rent. And then that rent pays for their mortgage payment, for their house payment they're making, and all the rest you guys get to keep. So you can split the profits with your parents. You get paid because you're like the property manager, but maybe you could split the profits. Maybe you could do a partner on this deal where even when you eventually sell a property, if you ever do, when you sell the property, you can even split the profits from that too. So not only do your parents get paid more money than what they probably would make at the stock market, but then you get paid with again, zero dollars out of your own pocket. So again, a lot of different things you can do. And if you're buying it for your own personal residence, the great thing is it's a small down payment for your parents. There's not a lot of money out of pocket. Heck, even if you've got some money and if you've got a little bit of credit history, you could probably do it too. And then don't even have to worry about your parents. You can go buy your own property and then rent out some bedrooms in that property. And again, make lots of money. And of course, when there's appreciation and things like that, you can make not just rent off of it, but you can make some really good returns. Give you an example, I bought a rental, and this is not one that I did as a house hack, but just one of the rentals I bought was in Tennessee. You know, I bought that thing six years ago. It's already appreciated about $100,000, guys. $100,000. I did nothing for that, literally nothing. I didn't have to fix up the property. It's just because values go up over time. So not only am I making rental off that thing, which by the way, was like, $32,000 out of pocket, and that's more than what you probably would have to go out of pocket for your own house. But $32,000 out of pocket, only to then now have it over like $150,000, you know, or actually $165,000 to date as of this point, that I've made in profits from that property. So lots of ways you can create great income, 
great returns. And then that gives you more money to play with to then create more passive income as well. And that's how you create passive income as a college student. All right, if you'd like to learn more things about what you can do when little creative ways, like and subscribe on this channel. Like go ahead and look at other videos. We got so many cool ideas that you can learn, especially as you start to build and grow more of your own money. Check that out and subscribe today.